Hey guys, welcome to Hot Rod Blues. I'd like to invite everybody to subscribe to our YouTube page and ring that bell for notifications. Also, we're on Facebook. Hope you guys enjoy the show. Welcome, everybody, to the episode 10 of the Hot Rod Blues podcast. I am your host, Sean Brereton, along with... Javier Agustin, Bomber Steel Customs. Sean Young, Coldwater High School. <laughs> Coldwater High School. Glad to have you. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Long trip. Uh, and I'm Mike Abbott from Steel Rose Metal Co. Yeah. And we have a special guest today, uh, Mr. Preston Davis, uh, 2016 Hall of Fame drag racing, uh, drag racing Hall of Fame inductee and uh, an HRA Division II uh, record holder and, well, champion, I guess, a couple times. And I'm sure there's... 15 other things that I do not know. And uh, so yeah. uh, Memphis Rotter, of course, drove the famous uh, Bow Weevil uh, race cars for Ray Godman. Yep. And, um, and then also his uh, Southern Pride uh, dragster as well, right? All right. So, You're right. Yeah, Nostalgia Drag uh, with the uh, NDRL. Right. Correct. Yep. So we, we um, could we could be here all night. Yeah. This yeah. is where you tell him what he <laughs> missed. Uh, Name the most important off. thing he missed. Yeah. 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 So this is the point where we just tell you to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mr. Preston, but, it's good to have you here. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Thank you. It's excellent. I'm, I, I'm honored to be here. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, so the honor is definitely ours for yeah, sure. Yeah. So so yep. we're sitting in front of some uh, pretty famous cars that you have history with behind you there. Yes, we are. Yeah. yeah. Tell yeah. us a little bit more about that first one right there, right to your right. This one here? Yeah, that's the one. In 1958, that car was built. And it was built here in Memphis. It was a kit. And they took it somewhere uptown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vibrating the table. Oh, was it? That's yeah, all right. you're okay. <laughs> you're anyway, the year was 1958. You sure it's not me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the year is 1958. Right. And they, they sold that in a kit? Like out of a catalog? Yeah, what catalog did that come out of? Well, it had a different body on it. Uh -huh. And when they built that body, Red Dyer made the statement to Raymond. He said, you know what that thing looks like? It looks like an old bow weevil. And Red was from up close to the Tennessee River, country boy. Yeah. Well, the body they had on it did look like a bow weevil. But since then, it was changed over to that. And I'm proud of that car because there's a lot of work in it. Right. You should be. And, it's beautiful. And what's... And they went back in 59, and then they went back to Detroit in 60 and ran in the final for Top Eliminator against Gene Adams and the Albert Snows. Yeah, we heard about that rivalry when Marshall was with us. Gene Adams is a great yeah. friend of mine. Yeah. Now, he's in California. Yeah. But to make a long story short, Howard Hughes and Marshall and a couple of others from Memphis were up there. And I heard this story for 40 years from Raymond. <laughs> Those are the ones that we want. <laughs> <laughs> when they went across the finish line, Raymond swore to me this car was in front. But the front wheels were in there. Oh, wow. <laughs> So when I got ready to build this car back, I called Gene Adams. And I said, Gene, I've heard a story for 40 years. You ran Raymond in Detroit 
in 1960, and Raymond swears the bow weevil was at the f hid at the finish line. Yeah. But the front wheels were in there. He, I said, Gene, who won that race? Just between me and you. Gene said, uh, he hesitated a minute. <laughs> He said, well, I'll tell you, I brought the trophy back to California. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the following Wednesday, after that race, they had a ribbon-cutting ceremony at Indianapolis Raceway Park, and this car was the first one that made the first official rate run down Indianapolis. Down wow. Indy. Yeah. And... When I told John Lundberg that, he said, wait a minute, can you document it? I said, yes, I've got it all documented. Because he told me, I asked him, we had that car in 2013 up at Bowling Green. Yeah. When I was Grand Marshal up there. Right. And we had it in, in the Holiday Inn foyer. Right. And I wanted to get lumber because he was an appraiser of race cars at the time. And when Jim Walther and I came down the, the elevator, I look out there and Lundberg's out there and he's talking to two young kids. I said, look, I'm going to go over there. He ain't going to know who I am. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to try to weasel it out of him how much that car's worth. So I get within 10 feet of Lumberg, and he said, how are you doing, Preston? <laughs> he knew you were coming. I said, John, <laughs> I didn't expect you to know who I was. Oh, hell, everybody knows who you are. I said, no, they don't. <laughs> Not people from California. Right. He said, you'd be surprised. So anyway, I said, look. I'm just trying to find out how much this car's worth. Yeah. He said, well, I am an appraiser. I get $750 to appraise it. You will get a 37-page appraisal. Wow. I said, I don't need it. I got all the pages on this car. <laughs> right. He said, uh, I said, just give me some idea. I got something I don't know what it's worth. He looked at it a minute and he said, high five figure, low six figure. Well, that was a hundred grand. Right. Yeah. I said, I believe you're low. What do you know that I don't know? I said, do you know where this car was Wednesday after the Nationals in Detroit? No. I said, they had the ribbon cut, cutting ceremony at Indianapolis. And this car made the maiden voyage down that racetrack when that ribbon was cut. And he said, were you in it? I said, no. Red Dyer was driving it. Was he the driver at that time? Yeah. Red? Let me tell you. I'm not going to say what I want to. <laughs> <laughs> he can drive. He could drive anything. And he had balls. <laughs> you know, yeah. I yeah. mean, the man could drive a race car. So, Mr. Preston, let me ask you this. Um, I heard a story once about you pushing a car over a finish line. Me? That's what I heard. Pushing what car? I don't know. Something about down in Louisiana at a race, you had to push a car over a finish line. I had to push a car twice. <laughs> twice? <laughs> Once in Louisiana. Yeah. And it was the fueler. Yeah. And we both broke on the starting line. Wow. But I, I left first, and I was out ahead. Right. And it was... Um, I think it was Kerry McEnroth that was in the car. But they made us push the cars to the finish line. 
Now back then, I didn't have this. <laughs> and I was young. So you won a race by pushing the car over the finish line. Well, yeah, but let me tell you what. The Louisiana guys, you weren't supposed to have any help. Right, <laughs> right. And the Louisiana guys, finally, Mooneyham, Gene Mooneyham owned a car. Mooneyham pulled in behind it, and he was fixing to push it. And all the guys from Tennessee were right there at the side of the racetrack. And they threatened to whip some ass. <laughs> <laughs> nobody pushes, nobody Only the gets driver. any help. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I, I beat him down there. <laughs> <laughs> The other time... Was that a whole quarter mile? Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But like you're dead at the, the end. Tree from, about, then... from about 200 feet out. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. But, but it wasn't that hard to push. What was your yeah. ET on that? I didn't break it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, what was your ET? Preston, what was the ET on that push run? 98 something. <laughs> 98 minutes. It that, is, that's still pretty I good. I have a scrapbook, and it's got all <laughs> that in it. That's yes. awesome. That's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> That's pretty now, good still, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other time was the funny car. And Raymond, I mean, I love him still, but he was the tightest person you ever wanted to meet. Yeah. And I kept telling him, we had that Barracuda funny car, and it was like a bracket race race car. It runs 670, 670, 671. I mean, it was that consistent. Wow. Well, we're getting ready to go to Indianapolis for the Nationals. I don't remember what year it was. And I kept telling him, Raymond, we don't need to go. Because we can't run with these guys. They're running high 650s. This was 1972, and they had, they had the National Challenge in Tulsa that Garlitz was involved with. Now, you had to, if you didn't have but one car and you didn't have an airplane, you had to pick one or the other. Right. Well, I told him, I said, they're beating us because they're, they've just come out with that Crower Glide clutch, and they're running high 650s. Well, about Tuesday before we were going to leave, Wednesday to go to Indy, he had decided he was going to Indy, not Tulsa. A UPS truck pulled up in his driveway and they got a box out and it had Crower written on it. I knew what was in that box when I saw it. <laughs> I called him. He was at his insurance agent. I said, Raymond, we got a box from UPS and it's from Crower. You know what's in it? I said, no, I hadn't opened it yet, but I got a good idea. Yeah. He said, well, you need to open it up, read the directions, put it in the car. <laughs> read the directions. <laughs> That's all, you know. He said, because that thing costs $800. In 72. Wow. Well, that was a lot, a lot of money, money back then. Yeah, yeah it was. Absolutely. Woo. So you were also the motor builder, weren't you? You were what? You weren't just the driver. You were also the motor builder for the team, right? Yes. <laughs> Uh, it didn't take long for Raymond to realize that I knew what I was doing with the motor. Right. Uh, I put the clutch in. We went to Indy. We had that two-and-a-half-ton Dodge car carrier truck. It was a ramp truck, and 
we went to Indianapolis and we went through Tech and the first pass and we weren't leaning on it. It went 653. Wow. Amen. And I came back and he says, what do you want to do now? I said, I want to load it up. I want to go to Tulsa. <laughs> what? We can drive, we can run both these races because the, the nationals were run on Monday. So that's what we did. Wow. We loaded up, drove to Tulsa, unloaded it, qualified. It was a 64 car show. And I'm talking everybody that was anybody was there. And some people that wasn't because we were there. <laughs> <laughs> and we started wading through the field. Quarterfinals, the guy, I was running the left lane, the guy in front of me broke the motor right out of the hole, and I'm strapped in. And they start putting white something on the track. I didn't know what it was at the time. And I said, man, I'll never get down this track. Yeah. Well, when they got it swept off and everything, I did my burnout, came back, did the dry burnout. And when I did the dry burnout, it picked the left front tire up. I said, oh, oh look at here. That's sticky stuff. <laughs> it's going to make a run. Well, I won that one. It got down. There were four of us. Raymond Beetle, Don Perdome, McEwen, and us. Wow. Well, that's, a, before, that's some names right there. That's, that's who's who for <laughs> yeah, sure. Right. That's that's big hit. That's big company there. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. They came to us. There was fifty thousand dollars at that point in nineteen seventy two. Man, that's a lot of money in the purse for funny car, and they wanted to split it four ways. And Raymond, you know, I'm saying. Sounds good. Raymond's saying, I don't know. I said, Raymond, come here. And I pulled him <laughs> off the side. I said, we have never won $12,500 at a race. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> now, you know what? I, wa I was working for Raymond at the time. He had me employed. $200 a week and 10% of the winnings. Oh, you wanted which I found out, which I found out <laughs> quite a bit later that that was the lowest he paid anybody. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> was that what? The and I did more work than anybody. <laughs> right. Well, it sounds like if you were driving and you were the uh, the head mechanic, he, he might have been the cheapest man in drag racing. Yeah, you doing yeah. two or three jobs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was was that what the uh, the the infamous everybody talks about? Um, you guys having a, a falling out and you taking a car to a which drag time? Race. Which time was <laughs> was as many that, times? I tell time? people that Raymond and I were like married four times and divorced <laughs> four times, and it was always about money. Yeah, yeah. Um, that didn't mean I didn't love the man. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And anyway, we split the money. We all shook hands. And to get from the pits to the starting line at Tulsa, you go around this turn. And we had to quick change rear end in that funny car at the time. And I had heard it before. You know, I'm strapped in. And it's clicking. The click, click, click. So I told the crew, I said, y'all go get Raymond now. And he came over, and I said, look, Raymond, the rear end's fixing to break. 
How do you know? I said, I can hear it clicking. It's already got a tooth or two gone. Right. Be easy with the fern out, he said. I'm running Don Perdome. He's over in the left-hand lane. So you guys did not split the money, right? You didn't split yeah, the money. Shook hands Do and what? Split. You did split the money, but you still were going to run. Yeah, I still had to run. Oh yeah. We oh, okay, going, so you're still running. Okay, we I thought you were just split the fifty thousand. Okay. And we're going to run for the trophy. Okay, I got right. you. I got you. So. And I didn't get along with Perdone. No. <laughs> Never did. No. <laughs> no. So. We get ready, and we pull up there, and I fired up, and I told my brother was there, and I said, put a lot of water down, because I didn't want to put a lot of strain yeah, on, that, on rear that rear end. Yeah, I didn't yeah. want to grip it. I did my burnout, and I back up. He hadn't come by me. It was his burnout, and I loosened the straps up when I got back there and they got the hood they got the car body up and there's all all uh, under it uh, he broke it and so the starters giving me a single and I go I go up and the light came down and I just kind of eased into it and the car, got the car moving, but I could feel the teeth in the <laughs> rear end up. shelling. Mm. And I got, again, about 300 feet. And Bob Fry was the announcer. And Bob and I are good friends. Oh, they got, I, got, I got out there. It wasn't going any further. So I just pulled the shut off and I get out the window and I'm taking my helmet and my coat off and I hear Bob Fry say, well, let me tell y'all, he's got to get that car to the finish line by himself <laughs> or he race. don't run final round. Oh. So that was the second time you pushed the car across the <laughs> Well, the problem with this car and the fueler was the rear end was broken. I was going to say, with the rear up. end locked oh. up, oh, my gosh. And, yeah. I, and I put my helmet and my fire suit top up over the spoiler, and I start pushing. Now, I done been up for two days. <laughs> And I'd push it about far here to that wall, and it would lock. And I'd have to pull it back to get it loose. Rock it. You know, and there's 30,000 people in the stands <laughs> hollering, go, press and go. go. And I'm saying, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> well, to make a long story short, <clears throat> I don't know how long it took me, but when I turned that wind light on, I hit the floor. You just fall <laughs> out. <laughs> I bet. And they hooked up. Now, my helmet and my fire suit top were up over the spoiler. And we get back to the pits. Now, I've got to change the rear end. I had a bad hole that we had a hot plug in. So I said, you know, if I'm going to change this, I'm going to get the motor right. I'm going against Beetle, I mean McEwen, yeah. in the final. I wanted to win that race. For sure. Fry started calling for f funny car. Hmm. I wasn't going to make it. <laughs> McEwen came over. He said, let me tell you something, Preston. Take your time, get the car right. He said, because if they don't run funny car, there's 33,000 people in those stands that's going to come out here and tear this racetrack up. <laughs> right. So what, what we did, McEwen 
talked Raymond into using one of his heads on our motor. Oh, wow. And he was running Ed Pink stuff, and we were running Keith Black stuff. And what that did was that fattened the motor up a little bit. On one side. And I got oh. beat by about two feet. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. It was a great race, but I knew I, I left on him, but I saw him moving on me. So that's just that story. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also heard once that you may have flipped a car over on the side to do work on it at a racetrack. Is that true? Do what now? I heard you flipped a car up onto its side. That wasn't me. That, that was wasn't before you? me. That was before oh. you? <laughs> I have a picture of that. You do? <laughs> it, <laughs> look, nice. my wife kept three scrapbooks when I was racing. Yeah. Every race that I ran that was written about is in those scrapbooks. Okay. Win or lose. Yeah. That's cool. That's epic. So that was that was uh the Harrison Jacobs. That car. That car was the one. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> epic. Harrison Jacobs drove the double A car. Yeah. Red Dyer drove the A modified Roadster, which was that one. Right. And they were both before my time. Right. So how did how did you get into how did you get into them? What was first of all like what what was your background like? How did you get into cars in the first place? And then how did you end up getting into getting when into when I was in car? high school? Yeah, I lived on a gravel road. And it was a dead-end road. And when I'd come home, my mother and daddy had a 1947 Nash. Hey. Nice. I'd sneak it out <laughs> and drive up and down. And then I'd get back and have to cook supper for everybody. <laughs> that, that was a three-time-a-week deal. Yeah. But I've always liked drag racing. When I was in high school, I got caught once on the strip, on the street, went to jail. Wow. We have that in common. Went to juvenile <laughs> court. Yeah. Probably have that in common with Mike. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, they, probably uh, have that in common too, Mike. They, uh, <laughs> they impound the Nash? No, no, no. I wasn't in the Nash. Uh, what were you driving? My daddy had bought my mother a 1958 Bel Air two-door hardtop Chevrolet. Nice. <laughs> Racing mom's car. <laughs> three, and I got three, caught yeah. doing it. Yeah. Three on the trees. And it was before I started dating my wife. Yeah. And we went over to Fraser High School for something, and on the way back, it was a guy that had a 56 Ford, and we were going down James Road. <laughs> That's and a, I wasn't you still race him, on James Road nowadays. But yeah. And I wasn't going to let him pass <laughs> until we got to the S-curves, right. which is where Hollywood hits That's now. Right. Yep. Yeah. I wasn't going to keep going. <laughs> what I didn't know that he knew, we passed the police car. And Memphis had just taken that in. So it was in the city. So I slowed down, and he went flying by me. And they caught me. I see the, I see the police car <laughs> about at Hollywood. Yeah. And I pull over. It was a it was an experience that I'd never been through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they put me in the back of the squad car. They asked me who was in the Ford. I knew who it was, but I wasn't going to snitch. That's yeah. right. So here comes the lieutenant and he says, uh, "Who was that in that car?" I don't know. He said, "I'm going to give you one more time." 
If you don't tell me who's in that car, you're going to jail. You might as well not ask because I don't know who it was. I didn't know the guy's name, but I knew it was Jane Cleves. She was a majorette. I knew who that was. But they took me to juvenile court and they hammered me. It's just like I tell people. If you ever watched Dragnet on TV where they got somebody in a room with a big light. <laughs> yeah. that That's you. the way it was. <laughs> Back then. So when you and the wife got together, did she know that you, you were You know, they talked, <laughs> they talked about putting me in jail and all this and all that. And I finally got one phone call, and I called an uncle of mine that was captain on the police department. There you go. And he wanted to know was such and such at the, on the desk, and I said, yes, sir. Let me talk to him. Well, we talked. He talked to him, and they let me go. I paid a fine. Oh, yeah. But I didn't spend the night. They called my daddy, and that was the worst thing oh, they could oh, do. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Was your dad a car guy? Huh? Was your dad a car guy at all? No, he was a carpenter. Okay. I mean, he did, He wasn't into cars at all? Oh, no. No. Nope. And he was mad that I was caught in that brand new... What They took? They towed the Bel Air to the impound lot, didn't they? No. They, they just, let this girl that was 18 years old drive it to the house. Oh, oh wow. Oh, go. <laughs> So nice. dad, dad already knew there was something yeah. fishy going on. <laughs> like, where's my son? <laughs> well, she told she told him what had happened, and Daddy came down to get me. And when we walked out of J.C. Juvenile Court at eleven o'clock at night, he took my driver's license and he tore them up. And he said, "You'll never drive that car again." Mm. He had a '54. Chevrolet pickup. So anyway, that's a long story. Yeah, has nothing crazy. to do with drag racing. Yeah, no, I don't know. No, I no that's like, cool. Yeah, I like but that. that's I would that, say that's an origin story, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, right, for sure. Well, uh, so uh, so how did you end up driving these cars then? Well, I wound up. Raymond built Lakeland drag strip. Right. I'd never been down to a drag strip before. But I had a 50 Mercury that had a 283 Chevrolet motor in it. He's got a Merc. I've got a, I've got got a, a 50 Merc. Mercury, yeah. Uh, this was a four-door mm -hmm. Mercury. Wow. Yeah. And it was a junker. <laughs> <laughs> I cut a big hole in the side of the fender and ran it. The exhaust. The exhaust out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was my first really race car. Right. Mm -hmm. But then I got a 51 Mercury. Mm -hmm. And it was a it was original paint fading that an old lady owned. And I put a 327 Chevrolet motor in it. Mm -hmm. And I was the terror of Summer Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's awesome. <laughs> so what, what what year would this be about? 1957. 57. 56, somewhere right wow. in there. Yeah. So Summer Avenue has been always. the place. Oh, no, that's that, always. That's, 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 it's, it's amazing. We used to go we used to go down to a, where that Wendy's is right now. The yeah. new one? The wearing has turned into a Mexican place. Oh, oh, uh, that's One. over by my house, Mendenhall. Yeah. Over by Mendenhall? Yeah, like right yeah, yeah. Okay. outside Mendenhall. Yeah. Yep. It's next to Kenny Bomar's. They got the best uh, tamales. Yeah, that's uh, High Point Terrace, High Point. No, that is, no, well, that's no, the old, that's old, old Wendy's. No, the new Wendy's is further no, up towards Mendenhall. The one he's talking about is the, the Wendy's that used to shut down that's in between White Station and Mendenhall. Yeah. By lucky, we're lucky. There's You're a, right. There's a McDonald's right across the street from it. Yeah. More or less. Yep. So down by Northern Tool and all that stuff. Yeah. You're right. All right. Mendenhall White Station. Yeah. yeah. There you go. But uh, when I was in high school, 
the big deal was go to Hart's Bakery, which was at the corner of Mendenhall and Summer, and you could get a hot loaf of bread right off the line and have a pound of butter and take it over <laughs> down where that Wendy's is. Yeah. There was a drive-in, and it didn't have anything to do with the immediate Rebilio family as we know it. Yeah. But it was Rebilio's. Okay. We take that loaf of bread and that butter, and we'd go to Rebilio's. Go to Rebilio's and eat. But anyway, <laughs> forget about. Uh, we're not. We're not. Uh, we're not into the real drag racing. Yeah, we're, right. I know. We're oh. into my. No, juvenile I like it. Stuff. Yeah, your juvenile delinquents. <laughs> uh, but see, but that's the stuff that people don't know. So that's right. that's kind of the cool part. Is like you know everybody knows. Everybody knows all the racing stories here and there, but but there's other things that we don't no, know. No, they don't know all cool. the. They oh, don't no, know, they don't know all, all the of racing them. stuff. I know. Yeah, yeah. So besides besides the uh, besides the fifty one Merc, who is the hottest thing on the road with the with a loaf of bread and a pound of butter? After the fifty one Merc. Yeah, obviously right after that. Yeah. <laughs> that car. Oh yeah, that was right that after George Ray's Wildcat drag strip in Paragu. Yeah, absolutely. I can't imagine, man. Uh, of course, of course, George Ray's back then was probably new. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, yeah. like now, you go down that thing, man. It's like, <laughs> I, I've heard it's a rough. lot of a lot of crazy stories about that yeah. drag strip. I, yeah, I can imagine. You know what? <clears throat> that was the coolest thing that I had ever done in my life. Was Joe Mundy owned this car? Had a Little block Chevrolet in it. And Hugh Walker was his driver. And he got drafted. He wanted me to drive it. So I did, and I went to Paragu the first time. That was a ride. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think I went more than 100 miles an hour. Yeah. But that really got me hooked. Yeah. So that was that was your first first chance down the track. No, I drove the Mercury down. A well, race right. Track, so you did that, but, but, but that was yeah a big yeah, yeah. big step up. Yeah, it didn't, monster ha it didn't have that body uh, on it. Yeah, uh, it was just a dragster. Okay, shorty body, but it was a short car. Yeah. Um. That thing's cool. I drove it. For Joe, while he was in the service, and then I sold, and then I bought it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, uh, well that that's kind of a cool story too. Is you found you found that car again after many many years, or, right? Forty or so years. Yeah, that's amazing. But I was looking for the George Root chassis. You came yeah. across that one. See, I, here's what happened. When I had the opportunity I want to say it was 1967 and we were the national record holders in C Dragster and we go to Indy and there's 26 cars in in, in C Dragster I had a partner He had a problem. He liked women. <laughs> and when we get to Indianapolis, he and another race car driver that y'all know, but I'm not going to mention any names, they went out first night. We were at the Holiday Inn at, at the airport. Well, Bill came back. My partner, <laughs> and I'm not going to mention names. Next time I saw him, that car was loaded up to come home. <laughs> Dang. Four days later. Four wow. days. It sounded like he had a naughty time. <laughs> oh, naughty. <laughs> he had a little naughty party. <laughs> but anyway. Wow. So this was before Raymond. We obviously. get down. Now, we had the record. 924 at 150.50. 
And I wasn't paying attention to the cars. I could run in the teens, nine, ten, and I knew it. And we get down to where we're the, in the final pair. And when we come to the staging lanes, it was a car, and it said Gibson and Gill on it. They were from Pennsylvania, and they had a Hemi in it. And I had that little Chevrolet, and I look and said, I can't believe this. He's a sea dragster. Well, we leave the line, and I'm ahead of him when we left. <laughs> Not at the end. Yeah. <laughs> but we didn't get much past the Christmas tree till he flew by me. And I went nine. I think I went 908 on that run. Wow. He went 883. Oh, mercy. And I said, there's absolutely no way he's legal. <laughs> I followed him through tech. He wound up winning the Eliminator. Mm. And that was the year that John P. and Marshall won B. Altered. And they had to run him in the elimination. Wow. But anyway, John P. and I were best friends. I haven't heard that name. Is he Memphis? The Memphis guy? John P. Rabilio. Oh, Rabilio. Oh, okay. He okay. drove Raymond's, I mean, Marshall's car. Okay. Gotcha. And we were the same age. Got you. Huh. Well, Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of speaking of friends and cars, uh, we had talked about uh, Godman's sedan, uh, the blue one, full fendered. Yeah, yeah, it's here. We wanted to. Yeah, it's it's actually sitting over in the shadows, right over there. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we'll, we'll look some, at. We'll yeah, I was gonna say we'll we'll go over and look at it later. Oh. I know. I noticed that car at the uh, Rodgers yeah. reunion this last year. They had it kind of front and center when you came into the building, and. Uh, you talking I, about the street rod? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. I, it caught my eye. Just I like the color. The, it's a midnight blue pearl almost, and it's got a tan interior. And I saw a dog collar, and I said, "That's weird. Somebody's got a dog." I didn't know his car was. <laughs> yeah. right. It's like somebody left their dog collar in there, and they said, "No, that's that's Godman's car. That's how he uh, that's how he floored it." <laughs> I said, yeah. "What do you mean?" He said, "He was in a wheelchair." Anyway, tell me, yeah, tell me a little. You own that car now. Uh, I don't own no, that. Who car. owns that car no. now? I don't. Uh, I, it's still it's still owned by Godman's family. Jane but, yeah. owns that car. Yeah. Yeah. Raymond's it's, wife. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Along with these other three. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you know, about I'll tell that you. Car. I'll tell you the quick story about selling these cars. Raymond was sick, and I was going over there about every other day to his house. He called me. Two or three weeks before he died, he said, are you coming over today? I said, yeah, I'm coming over. I need to talk to you. So anyway, I went over there, and when I got there, Jane met me at the door. She said, he's in the bathroom shaving, going back. Now, at the time, I was building... My 7 car. I go back and I'm standing in the garage, in the bathroom door, and he's there shaving. And I finally said, You better be careful, old man, you'll cut your throat. <laughs> he said, uh, Come on in and sit down in this, on this stool. I need to talk to you. Well, I knew it was about the cars. <clears throat> he said, uh, I said, before you start, if you're fixing to try to sell me those cars, I know what you think they're worth. I can't afford them. Yeah. Yeah. 
He said, will you take it upon yourself to handle selling those cars for me? Because I'm going to be gone. He, he knew it. Yeah. Well, I know that he came over here and talked to Birmingham and told them those cars are worth a million dollars. And they can't get rid of them. Yeah. You know, and and the worth of the cars has just gone down. Right. Let me back up. We had that car, that car, and the fueler at Godman High Performance and I was I'd, I'd, you know before he got real sick I'd go in there a couple of times a week Yeah. and he had a chair sitting right by his desk and he called that my chair Yeah. so <laughs> I went over there and sat down and he said, do you know we got a million dollars worth of cars sitting right there on that showroom floor? I said, how do you figure that? He said, uh, well, they just are. I said, Raymond, of the three cars, the AA Comp, the A Modified Roadster, and the Top Fuel Car, which the Top Fuel Car just had a couple of things on it that was original. Yeah. I said, which one you think is the most expensive and the most worth more? He didn't hesitate. He said that one right there. And he was talking about my about car. Yours, yeah. I said, I'll tell you what I'll do with you right now. If you think that car is worth more than... Any of them you've got, I'll trade you that car for the fueler even. Wow. Why would you do that? I said, because I didn't drive that race car. Red Dyer drove it. So you never drove that car at all? After it was not the bow weevil. Got you. <clears throat> okay. Joe Mundy bought it. Yeah, I drove it. Okay, yeah. But I never drove that car. He said, you'd be throwing away money. I said, money's not the same to me as it is to you. Yeah, sentimental value is... And I said, you know, well, why would you want to do that? I said, because my name is on the fueler. Yeah. And I know you don't want to trade it for the funny car. So anyway, he said, let me think about it. And he did. A couple of days went by and I went back over there. I said, well, did you think about it? Yeah, I'm not going to do that. That'd be screwing you out of money. <laughs> I said, it's money I ain't got anyway. Yeah, all right. right. But anyway, he wouldn't trade me. So... But now, I mean, value-wise, that one is probably worth the most money, right? Is it not? I mean, if if you're talking if value, you, no no sentimental value, no nothing, as far as, like, if you're talking about car that is worth the most. If you go by history, yeah, this car right here is the one that's worth the most. Yeah. And I own it. Yeah, right. See, back when I brought it into his house and into his shop, and it was nothing but the chassis, and he asked me if I was going to put that Chevrolet motor in it, and I told him, I said, Frida and I have talked about that car, and I had no, ex no history with it when I had it, and it was a C dragster. Yeah. So if you'll give me some parts that I know you've got laying around on the shelf, 
I'll put it back just like it was in 1960. He said, well, if I give you parts, it'll be our car. I said, no, you didn't get the word. The word I said was give me. I said, there's a big difference. Yeah. He agreed. Yeah. You know, he wanted to know what I was talking about. I said, well, that blower that's sitting over on the other side, and you got pistons and you got rods and you're going to, and all I'm going to do is put it together. Yeah. We're not going to race it. So anyway, that's the way that went. <laughs> but he, so what was the most trouble that you guys got into on the road? Do what? On the road, traveling over the road racing. What was the most trouble that you got into over the road racing? He, he's not going to tell you with his family. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, his family's in the background. <laughs> let me tell you something. The day, the weekend that they opened Homa, yeah. mm -hmm. we had broke a motor. a week before, and I was up day and night for almost a week. Wow. Getting that fueler ready to go. Now, you had to be at the racetrack by noon, qualified. We left Raymond's house at 5.30 in the morning, Saturday morning, and I drove all the way down. And when we get to Laplace, the guy said, you're not going to get there going through. You're not going to get there going through New Orleans. Mm -hmm. He said, but you can go right down here and turn right and get on a ferry and go across the river on the ferry, and you can make it. So I did. I drug the front, I drug the spare tire off the trailer. <laughs> we get down there, and it's a quarter to noon when I come to the gate. And the guy said, Preston, you've got to be on, down that racetrack in 15 minutes. Well, there wasn't but 15 cars there. It was a 16-car show. I was just going to say, you just fill out the field, right? Yeah. Well, so we had straight alcohol in the tank to warm it on. Yeah. Raymond said, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to back it out. I'm going to get my suit on. Y'all get me started. I'll go down that racetrack with alcohol. Alcohol, yeah. And we were 16th qualifier at nine seconds flat. And we came back, and I set low ET first round. Nice. 701. Wow, that's a jump from nine flat. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's what nitro will do for you right wow. there. <laughs> that's what nitro will do. <laughs> Two and seconds. We... We... We got down to where there was like four or five cars, four cars, and it rained. We split the money, and I am absolutely drained. I'm worn out. I just can't go. Right. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I stood under the water. Yeah, and I lot. told, and it wasn't anybody but me and Raymond. Yeah. I told Raymond, I said, Raymond, I just, uh, we were leaving there. That was the 4th of July weekend. We were leaving there and going to Phoenix City, Alabama <laughs> to a race. I don't hardly get two miles from that racetrack 
And I pulled over and I said, Raymond, I can't, I can't stay awake. Now, everybody had the little white cross pills. <laughs> right, right, right. Diet pills is what it was. <laughs> they pills. were. That's yeah. right. Now, I was going to a doctor to get my pills. Yeah. And it was Oberdreen, L.A. Yeah. They called it the Great Speckled Bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've heard of such things. The Great Speckled Bird. I never did it, but a lot of people, that pill had one side that had little specks in it, and the other side was purple. Yeah. And a lot of them, a lot of the racers would cut it in half. Really? Because one half of it was to calm you down. And the other half the was... The other half was... To, mm. Put you through the Get sky. I did not know that. So <laughs> which one was which? So anyway, <laughs> I need to know these things. The speckled one makes you fly, or is it the purple side? Anyway, <laughs> Raymond said, "We can you get us to New Orleans? You know, it's forty-five minutes." I said, "Yeah, I can get us to New Orleans." He said, "We'll stop, meet a steak, and I'll drive." So we did, and I, I wanted. I got in the. I got in the back seat, and I took that bottle of pills, and I laid them up on the front seat beside him. Raymond didn't drink coffee. I said, Raymond, if you start getting sleepy, you need to take one of these pills. And some coffee. Well, I go to sleep. I do not know till now how far it is from New Orleans to Hattiesburg on the interstate. But I'm asleep. Probably hard. <laughs> and I feel this car every once in a while just... Swerving. Doing this. So I sit up behind him. I'm right behind him. And I'm watching him, and he's rubbing his hair, which is a bad. Yeah. Doing the kind of slap thing you or know. something. <laughs> and it's a bridge. There's this bridge we're going under. And he's driving, and he's going. And he ducked down. Like the bridge was going to hit his head. <laughs> I said, Raymond. He took one of those pills, didn't he? <laughs> what is the deal? Man, I don't know. I don't feel good. <clears throat> he said, but I don't. These bridges are getting lower and lower. <laughs> and I don't think I can make it under the next one. <laughs> now, we're at Hattiesburg. Right. <laughs> I said, don't even try to go under the next one. Go up on the ramp. And I go up on, we go up on the ramp. Now, I'm wide awake now. Right. I done had me an hour of sleep. <laughs> he said, I don't feel good. I said, what did you do? He said, I took one of those pills. What did you take it with? With my Coke. And he said, 15 minutes later, I didn't feel anything, so I took another one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. I said, oh, no. You're having a bad trip, man. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I said, that. how many elephants have run across the highway? <laughs> yeah, on only you? three. Only <laughs> three. <laughs> maintain. <laughs> maintain. <laughs> but anyway. That's epic. Now you asked me about That's going down story. the road. <laughs> That's right. That's a good story right That's there. That's the truth. Absolutely. That's Another deal story. was we had gone to California, and John Dearmore was behind us. And we were coming into Albuquerque and coming down the mountain, and it was snow. No, Dearmore was in front because he got loose from him and I could actually see and read what was on the side of his trailer. Oh, I have sideways. no clue how he saved it. Wow. But he did. Wow. That was Albuquerque, New Mexico? Yeah. 
And I it was did, snowing? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I didn't know. It's Yeah, it's up there. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you know, I still love drag racing. Yeah. And if it was not for the doctor and my wife, I'd still be driving. For yeah. sure. My wife would not give me any problem if the doctor hadn't. Right. Yeah. She might not like it. <laughs> <laughs> My wife doesn't like many things I do for some reason. Well, here's the thing. It's here's crazy. what got me about the whole thing. It's in HRA. Uh, I started trying to get my license in October. My license were going to go out first of the year. Well, sh my primary care nurse, uh, physician, was a woman and she just said I was too old to drive. And I tried to tell her that Kara Messini's was in his 90s. Right. That didn't make any difference to her. She didn't know who that was. Yeah, so then, position, yeah. then it got to the point where we were getting close to having a race, NDRL race at St. Louis. And I called... Greg Sharp, curator at the museum in California. Yeah, at NHRA. And Greg and I were good friends, and I told him. And I didn't know who was the Division Three director. He emailed him. And he gave him my address and my email address. And the guy's name, and I, I know, I remember his last name, because it's Thorpe. It's not Richard, but it was Thorpe. He called me up. Now, this was from October to March. I was... I had gotten very frustrated. Sure, yeah, waiting that long. A man was taking what I loved away from me. Right. Yeah. He called me the next morning and he said, now he's got me on the phone. And you don't know the his my history, but Back in the day, I could get hot. Yeah. <laughs> and I, We've heard that. I may have heard that once yeah. or twice. Yeah, and once I twice. wouldn't somebody to be messed with. Yeah, I may have heard that too. Okay. So, <laughs> he calls me up and he says, look, I got everything worked out on your driver's license. I said, do you realize that I started trying to get my license in October and it's March? Right. I said, you don't have to worry about it. I said, because I got on Facebook and I wrote a long deal saying that I'm done. I'm over. With. It's over. Yeah. You, NHRA, and that doctor have caused me to quit racing. Wow. And, you know, I'm walking around with that walker, and it's because I ain't doing nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not active. Right. Got to stay active. But I'll assure you I can still drive that race car. I believe it. I do not doubt that. And <laughs> How long did you drive a race car for? Total? Huh? How many years total were you a race car driver? I started in 64. 
And you just you and just I missed didn't read. and I missed some years. Yeah. Uh, we we Raymond and I quit racing in like seventy nine. Right. And then in middle nineties, two hundred uh, two thousand, we started restoring the cars. And boy, it just got right back, and my blood was boiling <laughs> That's about right. it. That's so, right. so, and at the time, at the time, we were, we, I had a construction company with my son, and we were doing really well. I'm talking really well. Yeah. But then the bottom dropped out because of COVID, mm -hmm. and it dropped out on yeah. us. Yeah. And I just, well, make a long story short, it was time for me to quit racing. Right. Yeah. I've gotten over it. I've gotten over it mostly. I was going to say, you don't sound like you're completely over it, but yeah. Uh, hey, it's tough. When people like you get me into something like this. <laughs> Damn, right. it's my fault again. <laughs> My blood's boiling right now. I know, right? Right? <laughs> I knew. I know. But anyway, let me I, tell you. Let me. Let me I, I let can me, tell. I can tell how excited you were when I called you about this. I was excited about yeah. this because yeah. I sit and watched Eddie and Marshall. Yeah. And Marshall knows <laughs> all the history about the Rotters Club. Yeah. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. And. You know, I just, uh, I love drag racing. Yeah. I don't get to go, but I keep up with Clay Milliken a lot. We're good friends. Yeah. When I was inducted into the Hall of Fame, he was my, he. Oh, he introduced you. He was my mm. introducer. Oh, that's awesome. Along with Raymond. Nice. And Clay did a good job, and he didn't last five minutes. He covered it like he should have. Yeah. And then Raymond started talking, <laughs> <laughs> and that's a story of its own. <laughs> it went on a little while? Huh? It went on for a little while? Is that I what didn't hear it? you. It went on for a little while? Is yeah, it did. Yeah. <laughs> So you know, he told about the first time we did a mash race against Garlitz and what Garlitz said afterwards. And What was that? I didn't see that. Do what? What did Garlitz say? I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Well, I just started driving the fueler for Raymond. Right. He didn't know me. And we go up first round, and I leave on him, and I beat him. <laughs> and he came over to Raymond is what I heard. He said, where'd you get this kid? He's good. Well, I didn't hear it. Probably good. You have been driving over there. <laughs> <laughs> we went two more rounds, and I left on him all three times. But he beat me the last two because he had to lean on it. And we were at Gainesville. But Garlitz and I are good friends. Now, Garlitz, he wants these cars. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He that'd wants be, them in his museum. That would be a good spot be. for him. Yeah. Well, he ain't going to buy them. And Mark, Raymond swore it wouldn't. Go. Look, if it was left to Raymond's daughter, she'd take them down there right. mm -hmm. on consignment. Raymond was said, my cars are not going to go to Garlitz's museum, and they're not going to California. It Unless like they want to buy Right. Period. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like my kind of guy. <laughs> he could squeeze $100 out of a penny. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
I just never was that way. But it was an honor to drive for Raymond. Now, I built that NDRL car. And we were, at the time, we were taking the Fueler and the Funny Car to the Cackle Fest. Yeah. Yep. So the first year that I drove my 70 car, they pitted us in the round track up at Bowling Green. Right at the top. Right at the top. Yep. You know, right, right there, roll you right where out. Where the bridge is, yep. you know. Yeah. And so when they call 70, me. Just, whoop, push you right down the hill. You know, and nobody in NDRL knew who I was. I was there. That was awesome. But was I, I'm going to tell you something. I don't like the index racing. Yeah. And that's what it was. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. you, well, if, it wasn't what you you were used to. Huh? It, it wasn't what you you were used to. It was just, it, yeah. It's Number different. one, yeah. I absolutely hated that trans brake button. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. And I was no good with it. Right. Yeah. It took four years of me swapping and going to foot braking and going back to it because everybody's saying the trans brake button's the way to leave. Well, I won one of their races, but the 70 Pro NDRL is probably the toughest 70 class. It's tougher than NHRA's race. Yeah, yeah. So, but the these guys have got, and I got it. I got everything that it takes to have all the uh, all the electronics. Right. Yep. But I decided this last year that I raced, I'm gonna take all that crap off and I'm gonna race like it was. That's right. And I foot braked it. And I, I did use the computer for some of the information. Right. But it didn't launch me. It didn't, you know. You did it the real way. Yeah. That's not racing. That's right. And if I run 699 with a 9, I got to put it in a trailer and go home. Right. That's BS. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> well, that's, that's I got a car sitting in that trailer at my house right now that I know if I even leaned on it a little bit, it'll run 660s. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of car. I Whoop. mean, the cars, yeah. I put the best of everything in that motor. Yeah. It's a, it's a billet Donovan block. Yeah. It's mm. an Allen Johnson billet heads. Yeah. You Motor can't something. get anything any better than what that motor's got. Yeah. What kind of car is it in? The the dragster. Okay. Uh, this, it's a dragster. The 70 dragster. Yeah. yeah. The front engine. 225 yeah. inch. Uh oh. Hold tight. I think the alarm's going off. That's okay. <laughs> we we can edit this. That's right. Who's got the gun? Who is it? I see Justin's up there, so okay. there you go. He got Do we off. need a gun? Yeah, <laughs> I think we're good. Yeah, we got we're press. Good. Good. Yeah, this is Collierville. We don't yeah. need a gun. Hey, what is what is the fastest? What is the fastest ET you've ever run? The fastest ET I've ever run. Ever run. You would think. It's two different, there's two different categories of fueler and a top fuel and a funny car. Right. The fueler had, uh, the motor was a 426. It wasn't a big block. It wasn't big. 
and I ran 641 at 241 with the fueler. Mm. Was the best we ever ran. Yeah. Now, the funny car, it had a 487 cubic inch motor, and I ran... Six twenty one at two hundred and forty four miles an hour. Man, yeah, that's wow. moving though. Now that seven O bracket car I've got, I went out to Memphis several years ago just to test, and the air was right, the weather was right, and I came out. And I didn't change a thing from the last race. And it was still not lean. It was fat. And I went 678. That car probably, if I wanted to lean on it, which I won't. Yeah. Low sixes. Wow, yeah. It could run a fuel dragster. Yeah. Now... It's got the third set of rods in it, but it's got the same set of bearings and the same rings that it had when it was sent to me from Brad Peters. Wow! <laughs> wow! I mean, it, you don't hurt. You don't hurt it. Yeah. As long as you you know you don't run it to the nth degree, then then you can keep it. You know, that's great. <clears throat> well. We probably, uh, yeah, we've gone here for an hour and a half or so, so yeah. we probably we've probably need to wrap it up. An hour and a half. Yeah. yeah, you've been talking, man. Yeah, <laughs> time flies when you're talking. I know, here. right? Yeah. You think it's been time twenty minutes? Flies when you your wife over there is probably, oh my god, will he stop talking? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I'm but, sorry that I've kept you this. No, long. no, no. Sure. This is exactly hey, what we want. I was going to say. Talk, I could talk about this for hours. Absolutely. And, hey, anytime, you know, because uh, we, we love the old stories and uh, and we love we love just hearing the different things about that. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things that we still would love to cover with you. Uh, yeah, so sure. so we'd love to have you back for sure. But, uh, but no, so um, – <clears throat> so, I guess we'll wrap this episode up with with a teaser for next episode. But before we do that, right? we, you're you're invited to come back. We want to do this again. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I could spend this much time talking about my friend Raymond Godman. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And he absolutely. needs to he needs to have the credit. Absolutely. Yeah. So my my daughter is in a wheelchair. So I I I look up to Raymond and I kind of introduced my daughter to, you know, what he was all about. And uh, he's, he was an important person. Let me, let me, tell, you, let me yeah. tell you a quick story about Raymond. All right. Yeah, let's hear it. He called me one day and wanted me to come over. He said, I've got a class from Olive Branch, and they want to come visit places like Godman High Performance. Yeah. Uh, Buddy's transmission shop. So uh, he said, you need to come over and help me clean up a little bit. Now, when he was alive, on the back wall behind the counter, there was a big American flag. Right. I didn't pay any attention to too much of it. I knew his history because when that class came, he had a book on Korea. And it broke him up to the point where I had to read it. Wow. wow. He got shot on Hill 749. And they took him to a mass unit, and they said there's nothing that they can do for him, and they put him outside and covered him up and put a tag on his toe. Wow. wow. 
and one of his friends came by and happened to notice it was his name, and he uncovered him, and he was still breathing. Wow. And he went in there, supposedly the story is, he went in there with the gun up. He said, you get him back in here. He is not dead. And wow. they did get him in, and then they sent him to Tokyo, and then he went to San Diego, and he was in rehab for a couple of years. And That's amazing. Anyway, I go over there, and I'm cleaning up, and there was a picture, and it was about the flag. That flag flew on the White House in his honor. Wow. Very the flag cool. that he had. At and, I'm, and I'm reading it. And I said, Raymond, why didn't you ever tell me about this? It's a big deal. He said, you can read. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. I never knew that. I saw. I, I mean, I remember movie. seeing that American flag back there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Well, for him to do and accomplish what he's done in that wheelchair yeah. the last 40 years of his life is amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Now, Nothing did we sure have our that. ins and outs? We sure did. Right. Everybody does. And, you know, you talk to, you talk to Will Banks, and one time I, I left him. And Will Banks was building that car. <laughs> yeah. He told us. He told and us I know, I know what I watched that thing. <laughs> I watched it twice. Did you rewind it and watch that part over again? And he, di I did go after him. <laughs> yeah. I was still hot. And so tell me, right. you still didn't love the hell out we of doing went, it too. We went. We went. The first Division <clears throat> Two points race was at Phoenix City, Alabama. And, you know, at the time, Eddie and I didn't have a pot to pee in. Right. We had 10 gallons of nitro with us, and that was it. <laughs> and I told him, I said, I'm going through these pits till I find him, and I'm going to let him hear this baby. He said, don't burn. And he said, don't burn too much. We don't have a lot. So first round, I went seven flat in Eddie's car. And Raymond had to run the gold digger, which was Jack Hart out of Louisville. And they beat Raymond. Because we, the way it was going to work, I'm fixing to get it next second round. Oh. <laughs> but I had to run the gold digger, and I went six ninety six, and he went six ninety one, and he beat me. That's, oh my, that's close, man. That's close. But not long after that, Raymond and I got back together for the. Second or third. Kissed and made up. <laughs> Glad you two crazy No, we kids didn't kiss, down. but we made up. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we definitely need to hear more stories. So so we would love to have you back. If you would uh if you'd like to come back anytime, we would we'd love to have you back. Tell, tell All you gotta do tales. is tell me when. Awesome. Amen. Absolutely. You know, here's the thing. I'm retired. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's why we like talking to the retired guys. They're, they're available anytime. Right? I'm available just about <laughs> any time. That's right. I'm getting better with my back. My back, this problem with that walker Yeah. is when I went to Jackson with my 7-0 car. Oh, right, when you ran off the end of the track. Yeah, mm. well, what happened three weeks before that, we were no problem down in Louisiana, and the last run was 11 o'clock at night. And we came back and we packed the chutes. Now, what stupid me, what we didn't do is unpack that chute. 
when you got back. And fluff it out and put the little baby powder on it. Jack Thompson told me, look, if you can get to Jackson and get on it before these streetcars get on it, it'll take what you got. So that's what I did. You know, we got to Jackson. I went off the end of that track twice. Once then, and once the first time I ever drove Raymond's Fueler. Really? Wow. <laughs> we had a match race with Ronnie with a double-A fuel altered. And we ran 1,000 feet, and they had banners, and I beat him first two times, and Ridge telling me, you're not leaving hard enough. So, well, I thought I was leaving hard enough. <laughs> so the third run, Raymond and Red came over to me, and I'm packing the chute. He said, let me tell you how to drive that car. I said, okay. He said, you stage it. Now, it was a full tree, half seconds. That light starts coming down. Your right foot needs to start going down. And when the last yellow light comes on, you need to be on the floor with the gas throttle and you dump the clutch. Well, the first two runs, it was picking the front wheels up. I was used to that two-speed C dragster. Well, I did, but when I got up there and staged, I slid down in that thing so far. I said, this thing's going to come apart, and I want those parts coming over, over my head. <laughs> but it didn't. And when I let it go, those tires were instant smoke. The front end stayed on the ground. It looked like I was between two white icebergs. And then at about 300 feet, it started sitting me back. I'll never, I'll never forget the way it felt. I mean, it was trucking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I went under the banners and I popped the chutes. But Raymond at the time, he was notorious for not having brakes on his car. Oh, <laughs> that yeah. cost money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> brakes cost money. Now, that ditch that's a, at the end of Jackson, yeah. it wasn't there then. You went up over that asphalt and you were in a bean field back then yeah and i got it stopped and i'm sitting i'm sitting in the car and here comes red after me and i'm still shaking from adrenaline oh yeah wasn't afraid yeah he said are you ever gonna get out of that effing car <laughs> I said, Red, that was one hell of a ride. He said, I want you to get out, stand on that slick, and turn around and look down that racetrack. I did. And in my lane, there were two black marks from the starting line <laughs> to those flags. All the way under the banner. <laughs> and they were straight as a string. <laughs> nice. He said, now you know how to drive the car. <laughs> <laughs> That's epic. That is awesome. But anyhow, I know we're we've yeah. been here a while. Yeah, yeah. we're definitely uh, uh we're gonna bring you back because because we want to hear more that. stories for sure. So yeah, I'm good with that because I would like absolutely to do it and give up Raymond some honor. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So we will you we know, will the, do that for Raymond sure. Raymond was not an easy person to get along with. Well, we've heard stories. <laughs> if if he didn't like you, you went into his shop and he didn't like you, get your ass out. <laughs> my guy. I don't want your money. Yeah. I don't want like your Mike's money. Mike's kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, that's my kind of guy. <laughs> right? So but he was a one-of-a-kind man. Yeah. 
and he accomplished an awful lot. He did in that wheelchair. He did. Amen. Absolutely. So, so anyway, uh, um, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up, but uh, but we're gonna give a little teaser. You already you already said uh, Clay Milliken, who uh, who introduced He's introduced you. Week. Yeah. So we have yeah. Clay Milliken scheduled. Uh, no, we're we're gonna go out to his place out in Drummond's. So uh, yeah, so we're planning to go out to Clay's place out in out in uh, Drummond's, Tennessee, and hang out in his garage and and say hello. So hopefully everything's cool with him. I haven't talked to him this week to make sure that you know he hasn't been scheduled for some Gillette commercial or something. Right. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but as far as I know, everything's good. So um, so yeah, so we're heading out there to Drummond's. So uh, I right. hope everybody everybody enjoys that. And uh, it's been. Preston, it's been a pleasure. For we sure, love having having you here, and we're definitely gonna have you back because uh, we, you know, I really the, didn't. I'm gonna tell you, I really did not believe I'd been sitting here an hour and a half. <laughs> I know, yeah. right? Yeah. I know. I think your wife does that. <laughs> yeah, right. that's what I said. Right? The wife does. But you she's know, all, she's all Look packed up, here. ready to go. <laughs> Let me yeah. tell you, that thumb drive. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of pictures on it. It looked yes. like it. Yeah, I yeah. want you to go through and look at all of them. There are three of them that are her. Yeah. Okay. And she said, absolutely do not put it. What would you like us to do? Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, those well, would be the first three you. ones to put up. Right. Right. Yeah, we got you. We're gonna, we're, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll open it with that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember who took the pictures, but we were at Bowling Green, and the first picture she's, and then get, I said, "Yeah, get over here on camera." Then I said, yeah. "Then I said, smile." <laughs> yeah. And she puts this no, goofy. Come on, come on, come come on. <laughs> you gotta get over here. <laughs> she puts Can't this goofy smile on, and then a little bit later, she's moved about ten feet, carrying a chair, and she looked really good. <laughs> <laughs> How long have y'all been married? Oh. Sixty-one years. How you gonna put awesome. him on the spot like that? Did you know? Did you know that he was an outlaw? I knew he knew. When I knew he knew it. That he got locked up for yeah. racing. <laughs> she, she, she liked the bad boys. Yeah, it was a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't. Bad boy. It wasn't her. I wasn't dating her. No, right. well, she knew your uh, reputation. Yeah. That's yeah. The yeah, she knew the reputation. So, well, it's well, been a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Thank me, you so let much. Let me tell Preston. you something. I yeah. love my wife. 61 oh. years, you better. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get, do any better, and she probably can't do any worse. <laughs> right? <laughs> you meet in the middle, and everything worked out. That's right. That's right. I'm I feel the same way the about same my way. wife. Absolutely. I can't do any better. She can't do no worse. We'll, we'll have you yeah. back. Yep. Mm. So Absolutely. we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. But yep. anytime you want me back, I'm, we're, go I'm good. We will have you soon enough. So. Hobby. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to cheese Hobby. it up. I'm just going to tell you. Hobby, you got to wrap it up. Yeah, I'm wrapping it up right now. We're here at Art and Speed. This has been Hot Rod Blues with the legendary drag racer Preston. Uh, we'll have you Absolutely. back next time. You guys have a good week. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye, everybody. Yes, sir. <laughs>